Pigs first arrived in North America in the early 1500s where European explorers were bringing domestic pigs over on ships and then they would release them onto the landscape as a source of food. People began bringing over purebred Eurasian boar. Those boar then interbred with these feralized pigs that were on the landscape at that point. And they've expanded and expanded out onto, onto this island. I love pigs. I love pigs. I love everything about them. But I wish more people knew that pigs were a problem. In the southeastern United States, wild pigs are a major ecological and economic problem. Wild pigs are one of the most opportunistic, generalist species out there. They'll eat almost anything. Most of their diet is comprised of plant matter. They eat a variety of mammal species, fish, amphibians, and also reptiles. The way they are designed is they root into the ground, right? So they will do a lot of digging and pushing the earth. The inside of this trap used to look like everything else out there. Through their rooting behavior, through their wallowing behavior, and through their foraging behavior, they can have tremendous uh, impacts on the landscape. They, they're really, uh, prone to get in and destroy our sea turtle nest. We had a total of about 25 nests that were taken by two hogs in two nights. They dig holes on the beach. Other birds, turtles, other different things can actually fall in those holes when they're big enough to actually act like a pitfall trap and they end up dying in a hole that a pig dug. But the biggest challenge with pigs is they have such an incredible reproductive capacity. You know, a single sow can have multiple litters in a year. They can reproduce at six months of age. We're really trying to maintain that steady pressure on the pig populations to not give them an opportunity to recover. Our goal is to have complete eradication of wild pigs. We'd like to have zero. We have slowly but surely been trapping and free range shooting wild pigs from the island. So on a day to day basis, just getting out here is by boat. So I'll spend 10 days to two weeks out here at a time. So once I can kind of establish, you know, good uh, pig areas, then that's when I start putting in cameras and uh, bait sites and I'm constantly monitoring those you know as I can kind of get a beat on the times that they're coming in and visiting you know I, then I'll start operating with with traps and making my rounds. I start out with corn on the ground so when I first get the trap in the net it, it'll start pretty high you know slowly I've lowered the sides of the trap and got them comfortable and basically seeing tunnel vision to the corn. By the end of it, we have pigs trapped. So these pigs will come in, right, and, and it slides down. It's high enough for pigs not to jump out. The, the darts are nice because it's not as stressful to the animals. There's an element of safety there. And then we're able to take some time and take samples, weighing it and things like that, that you wouldn't be able to typically do with a live wild pig. There's a collared pig in there that is from nowhere near. Here. Have you seen any collared ones when you had your in your photos last night? Did you Not at them? all. I haven't in the weeks that I've been baiting them. This is the first time I've seen them here, so it's pretty exciting. So, one of the tools that we're using to better understand the population here is putting out radio collars, so we'll be able to learn where these animals are moving on the landscape. 
And as the population gets smaller and smaller, those collared animals are going to become even more critical to find those last remnant pockets of pigs on that landscape. When we first started here, you could see damage from wild pigs all over the landscape. And so in the short window of time that we've been working here, we've seen a 70% reduction in that damage. And just walking around, you can see the ecosystem start to recover. We're not seeing that damage anymore. What we would expect to see with the hogs gone off the island, like a recovery of fawning rates in deer. Over the last year or two, we've had no sea turtles lost from pigs. So how the removal of pigs has led to the recovery of, of not just sea turtles, but the broader plant communities, these sensitive habitats, all the other species that, that really make this such a unique place. So we created this culture of pigs as a big game resource. Uh, there's been a number of studies that have shown that sport hunting alone is not effective at controlling pig populations. It encourages people to, to view that animal uh, as a game animal. If you create uh, a game animal out of an invasive species, you create a market. If you create that market, you create an incentive to keep them out there and, and essentially conserve them rather than eliminate them. So I'm an avid hunter myself and pigs are one of my favorite animals to hunt. So for me personally, it's been a challenge to kind of come around to the mindset, but you know, professionally I recognize that it's, it's just not the, the entire solution to, to controlling pigs at a landscape scale. Islands matter because they demonstrate the importance of removing invasive species and we'll utilize information that we generate here so that we can take this information and apply it elsewhere. There's a recognition that this is an important project. Top to bottom involvement of our staff, whether it's biologists, managers, visitor services, maintenance staff, we have a great partnership with the Fish and Wildlife Service and the University of Georgia and Dr. Beasley's lab. Everybody has had some level of investment in this project. We've got a, a fantastic partnership and team here of people who are all open-minded and, and really ambitious towards trying to achieve the same ultimate conservation goals. Pigs are, are always going to challenge you. They're always going to find ways to make you challenge yourself. It's such a rewarding uh, profession to be in, seeing the, the, the results and the benefits of the work. It is so gratifying to come out and spend time here on the island to see meaningful impacts on the landscape. All of it's a pretty cool experience. So I, I get to see and do some things that really nobody gets to. It isn't just a job for me and I'm really lucky. And sometimes I tell people about it so much that they're sick of hearing about it, you know, but it's my favorite thing.